For any graph, the edge chromatic number is greater than or equal to the greatest degree. For complete graphs, we saw that the greatest degree was n minus 1, and we found that if n is even, the edge chromatic number is n minus 1, the greatest degree. And so we might ask the question, what other graphs have edge chromatic number equal to the greatest degree? So we might consider some of the common types of graphs. Suppose g is a cycle. It should be clear that if g is a cycle, if it's even, the edge chromatic number will be 2, while if it's odd, the edge chromatic number will be 3. Likewise, if g is a tree, then the edge chromatic number will be the greatest degree among all of the vertices. Another common type of graph is known as a wheel, a graph with n plus 1 vertices, where n of the vertices are joined in a cycle, and the n plus first vertex is joined to all the vertices in the cycle. It gets its name because it looks like a wheel. Mathematicians aren't very good at coming up with new names. If g is a wheel, then the edge chromatic number is a homework problem. What about bipartite graphs? We know that the edge chromatic number must be at least as large as the greatest degree, so let's see if we can make a bipartite graph where the edge chromatic number is greater. Now, because a lot of things work for 2 that don't work for higher numbers, because 2 is an odd prime, let's start with the bipartite graph where the greatest degree is 3. So we'll color the three edges. The edges we attach to the terminal vertices could use the same colors. So it seems we can't make the edge chromatic number greater than the greatest degree in a bipartite graph. Let's prove it. We'll use induction on the number of edges. If there's n equals 1 edge, then the greatest degree is 1, and we only need one color. So our theorem is true for bipartite graphs with one edge. So now, suppose our theorem is true for all bipartite graphs with k or fewer edges. So if g is a bipartite graph with k plus 1 edges, let's choose any edge, e, and consider g prime, which is g minus that edge. There are k edges, and the greatest degree is less than or equal to the greatest degree of the original graph. Now suppose the greatest degree is strictly less than the greatest degree of the original graph. By our induction assumption, g prime has a proper delta g prime edge coloring, This edge coloring, plus one new color for the additional edge, gives us a proper edge coloring of G. And so G has a proper delta G prime plus one edge coloring. Since we only removed one edge, delta G prime strictly less than delta G means that delta G itself must be delta G prime plus one, and so that means that G has a proper delta G coloring. Now suppose the delta G prime is the same as delta G. Again, by assumption G prime has a proper delta G prime coloring. Now since we remove the edge between U and V to get G prime, this decreases the degree of both U and V by 1. So u and v and g prime will have degree at most delta g minus 1. And there will be at most delta g minus 1 edges incident on each. Since we assume there's a proper delta g prime coloring, and delta g prime is the same as delta g, that means there's going to be some color not used on edges incident at u, and also some color not used on the edges incident at 
fee. Suppose, renumbering as necessary, U has no edge with color 1. If V has no edge with color 1, then we could use it on the restored edge to obtain a delta G coloring of G. If the universe were a kind and gentle place and always gave us a break, we'd be done. We don't live in that universe. So we can assume that U has no edge with color 1, but V has an edge with color 1. Now, suppose V has no edge with color 2. As before, if U also had no edge with color 2, we can reintroduce the UV edge with color 2 and get a proper delta G coloring. So we can assume that V has no edge with color 2, but U does. Now consider the subgraph consisting of the edges and incident vertices that are colored either 1 or 2. Now suppose there is a path between U and V. Since G is assumed by par type, such a path must have an odd length. This path must alternate between colors 1 and 2, so the first and last colors would have to be the same. So both U and V would have an edge of color 1 or an edge of color 2. But since this would make things easy for us, we assumed it didn't happen. So, U and V must be in separate components. We can swap the colors 1 and 2 in the component that includes V. So the edge incident on V with color 1 becomes an edge with color 2. And since V did not have an edge with color 2, then it does not have an edge with color 1. So now both U and V lack an edge with color 1, which means we can restore the edge UV and assign it color 1. This gives us a delta G coloring of G, so if G is a bipartite graph, the edge chromatic number of G is equal to the greatest degree.